In this video series, I will explain the concept of gameness in nature. I will also give you, so that's the first thing. The second part will be uh, why this uh, gameness in nature is not in wild canines, but is found in a very pure form in some gladiator type domesticated dogs. And third, I will give you example of an extreme example of that, and that's lion baiting. So dogs versus lion. Have a great day. In this video, we will address the topic: Is there also gameness in the animal kingdom? So in the wild animals. And the short answer is yes, but they are hard to find, and not many uh, are that. And why is this? Because in nature, normally animals are there to survive. And if they don't uh, survive because they have games and they want to, do, to go on even against opposition that is much stronger, so even if needed to the death, they won't uh, be living long enough to reproduce their genes maximum, maximally. So that being said, let's look at some examples. We will talk at least about lions. We will talk about uh, Martin's family, but we also talk about uh, some of the Civet Cat family. So first start with lions. In the animal kingdom, the male lions are those that have that gameless attribute. And why? The female uh, lions are the best hunters, so how come that those male lions are those uh, that have the gameless trait. Whereas the lioness are the hunters, the male lions are the protectors. So, especially if other male lions come and try to take over this uh, group of lions, and, the one. and uh, oftentimes they also kill, kill the lion whelps. Because they don't want to uh, yeah, raise other uh, male lions with genes, but their own. And that's a big uh, problem for that group. Uh, you will be wasting uh, genetic diversity. And those male lions, once they get uh, challenged by another male lion, they will fight, even if that would mean that they would die. And sometimes they even face off with two upcoming male lions that will battle that one lion together. And after that, either be a, a two male, two, so two uh, male lion uh, group, or one will attack the other again. So only one will uh, remain. Depends a little bit how the situation uh, unfolds. But that's an interesting fact. Other uh, very game animals uh, must be the family of martens. Martens, even if you get pet martens like ferrets, they will happily engage with uh, a cat four times its weight, which is also a very good predator. Or uh, a dog, <laughs> even ten times its weight is very often the case. But sometimes even attacking herders like. Uh, Dutch Shepherds, Malinois, and of course it would be very easy for such a big dog, for any bigger dog that's uh, to kill uh, a ferret, if they are themselves still very capable, right? but oftentimes those household pets are already uh, bred to have such uh, a lack of courage. <laughs> they will have a, a hard uh, time with a ferret. But so a ferret is a domesticated polecat. And also polecats are known to fight cats, sometimes even uh, uh, venomous snakes, such as... Uh, how do we say that? Uh, Tick viper is the best uh, way to describe them. We have European viper, for example. And a similar case could, could be made for 
an entirely different family, being that of the civet cats, where they have the mongooses fighting with the big venomous snakes and also killing them. But sometimes also those snakes kill them. So it's a very uh, interesting uh, thing. But other, let's stay with the martyrs family, other very uh, uh, game martyrs are for example the wolverine uh, that even uh, chases away wolves or bears or even polar bears from uh, their own prey. <laughs> it's such a compact gladiator. Other examples are uh, uh, river otters or other otters that even uh, fight and kill small crocodiles, caimans, or also snakes, eh? even uh, small anacondas have been killed by them. Other examples are the, the, the meager weasel who can be like 50 to 100 gram and killing rabbits more than 20 times its weight. And yeah, a rabbit is still uh, still just a prey, but they will also engage very hard with each other. They will engage rats, and rats are quite capable of uh, killing animals, including their own, for the size they are quite big, and they will engage a bigger rat and kill it. They were really good, feisty little buggers. And you have a little bit bigger, the ermine, similar traits. Polecats already you mentioned. But also, uh, there are some martyrs that are less likely to fight. Including uh, tree martin and stone martin. But also you have to, uh, the fisher martin in the United States, like a smaller wolverine. Also very interesting to uh, to see. Then we had the civet cats, I already mentioned the mongooses, but also the jet cats, which is a different trait. And fossas are known to be uh, ferocious little uh, fighters. Another example could be made for, uh, and as we get into this yet, there's another very big cat that is really uh, going. Hey. against a very stiff competition and it could be either the snow leopard that you will even face off with four uh, livestock protection breeds, for example Tibbet and Mastiffs, and also the Jaguar, which is able to kill anaconda but also crocodile types. But both the snow leopards and also uh, the Jaguar are very fierce uh, and also solo fighting uh, big cats and also sometimes Siberian uh, tigers or Bengal tigers face of it very strong uh, prey, even bears so also very uh, uh, strong and also a bear can win from a tiger of course but this is not the type of game that I was referring to Another example of the Martin family would be uh, the badgers. Badgers are known for many a dog as the ultimate test. Some say that the otter is even a better test, but they are almost extinct everywhere in Europe. But very ferocious, will not back down. But there's an even more ferocious uh, badger. I'm not talking about the American badger, which is a lot more aggressive than the European one, but a lot smaller as well. So therefore the European is often considered as a bigger prey, but also the American margin. The American badger is a very formidable quarry, but there are other examples, especially the honey badger of Africa, which faces off on a regular basis with a very big, strong competition, including, including lions, uh, panthers, even hyenas and the like, and uh, they also face off with cobras and other very deadly uh, material. They just very able to withstand them, but also they have a don't uh, care attitude. They will just face anything, a little bit like the Wolverine, but the badger has a better skin and uh, 
so if the sharp uh, long claws are so able to dig they also face off with uh, with bee stakes who don't just don't uh, seem to bother them much to crack open the entire beehive they're an awesome creature altogether well i hope you like this If you like this video, I'm going to give you also a little bit more of insight that gameless can be a trait also found in nature. And why could be the big question. In case of lions, it would be easier to uh, explain. Uh, if that lion loses his pride, then he will be in big trouble. Because he's already old and it would be very unlikely that he would be overthrowing another male lion from its pride. So he has to hunt for himself and often die. Whereas uh, the honey badger is yeah, just a, such a formidable warrior and he, he tends to be uh, surviving also the wolverine. Many of other uh, big creatures will just move away when they see the wolverine because they already know how much of a warrior they are. Same with uh, honey badger, but uh, it's quite hard to understand why they pick such a formidable quarry. Perhaps because others don't, and they just fill the niche. But it's interesting to uh, come to our lives a little bit more. In an earlier video, we discussed uh, gameless in nature, and we gave examples of creatures that can also be game in nature. So gameless is the ability and the willingness to go on even if the uh, odds are stacked against you. An example would be the honey badger that will face off with a, a leopard or a big baboon or a lion. And other examples are male lions that defend their pride against other male lions, even till the dead. And multiple examples were uh, uh, mentioned, including also Wolverine and, for example, Mangooses, or Mongooses, so, so to speak, fighting with King Cobras, etc. But that being said, we didn't include canine members in this uh, overview. So canine members like for example the fox or uh, the wolf or jackal or coyotes etc. And that is a, there's a reason for that because uh, canines are very brave and also able to take down uh, big worries. But they work very often in a group. And for example, solo uh, hunting canines such as foxes oftentimes don't take down big quarry. And then you might say, yeah, I know a fox that has killed a lamb or, or killed a baby deer or killed a, a baby hawk. Yeah, sure, and they do that. And that's still a big prey for a fox. But the same size, this better though that you would face off even with an other adult hawk. Not win, mind you, but it's a different kind of bravery. So how come that in nature where they have to fight to survive and also have a very harsh life, this game is not found in the canine family, whereas captivity, domestication, so you will. Some members of the canine family are one of the gamest animals there are. And especially those that were bred for uh, the gladiator roles. Being in, in the earth, uh, the terrier is working formidable quarry like a badger. Or sometimes above ground against uh, the hawk that I mentioned. But especially those bred for the pit. Yeah, there were dogs that would go on and continue 
against other dogs even if they were ripped to, to pieces and still be friendly to the handlers but also dogs they would face off with lions huh? and everything they uh, threw at them and that's an interesting fact because that gives you also insight at what I mentioned earlier that I think the Bruin Terrier breeds are the most developed dog breeds there are because they are so much developed outside the scope of the natural uh, scope that a wolf and natural canine has so if you're interested in this topic I also have uh, the literature uh, studied about those uh, extreme uh, activities that they had so especially uh, against the bull but also against the bear, bear baiting and against each other of course those radiated type bull and terriers uh, the modern version of that would be the American Pit Bull Terrier or the bull and terrier of the past but they also fought lions, I have a video about that you can find that if you want to it's called lion baiting it's on my channel, channel. so uh, Please sit back and enjoy if you want to and see you the next time. Bye bye. So in this video we are going to talk about lion baiting. This is an uh, old blood sport where they use uh, dogs to combat lions and uh, two lions are most uh, proficiently described and one was uh, Nero and the other Wallace and they are both uh, big lions whereas Wallace was a smaller one born in captivity and Nero was a bigger one but uh, not born in captivity. About uh, this uh, lion baiting, I showed you some pictures. Well, I will show you some pictures in a, in a video. They normally had uh, dogs against these lions that had uh, a chance, so to say, or a little bit of chance. But very often times, those lion baiting contests was uh, a means to show the superior, superiority of the rulers over the common people. So, as you might know, the lion is uh, also known as the king of the jungle or king of all animals. And those kings also want to show how superior, superior they were and also that they were not even really attempting to fight such a things uh, were often placed upon the lion also being majestic and uh, very brave and lions are very brave especially male lions they're one of the only uh, animals that are known to be game as compared to a game dog so for example male lions are known to fight to death when uh, even when they are faced with two other male lions and want to take over the pride so one Male lion is the alpha of the pride normally, and oftentimes upcoming lions uh, they work together. Sometimes upcoming lions are alone, but very often they are with two. And two younger male lions will then challenge one alpha male lion that's getting older and fight to the death because that older male lion wants to keep his pride, otherwise, he will die because he is power is still there because the lioness captured a lot of food for them but they will wane off if left alone and therefore they fight so viciously the only other animals that are known that are dead game so to say or really game in the sense of, uh, in the sense of uh, a game dog are marten species so for example uh, badges, wolverines, the likes but also weasels and uh, Ermines and some other martens are known to be very 
feisty als een polecat. Maar really uh, feisty game little creatures. Very often times. But back to the lion baiting. So often times they use big massives. And because in dog worlds a massive is a big powerful dog, of course. But they were not so good as compared to the bull and terriers which are the true gladiators, modern incarnations, and they were also used to fight bulls or bears. And those were let loose against uh, a lion. In the case of Nero, he was a lion approximately 320 kilograms. He was uh, facing three dogs. And those three dogs uh, were set loose on him, uh, all had to wean off. But their average weight was 18 kilogram. That one was a really thoroughbred, gamebred bull terrier, and he was 60 kilogram. And if the other two already uh, yeah, were mauled very hard, and only this Turk uh, purebred uh, gamebred bull terrier kept her going on, and uh, he was. 60 kilograms as I mentioned, so 20 times smaller than that uh, big narrow lion. And now you might say 320 kilograms is very big for a lion, it cannot be done. But in the past, lions were a lot bigger than they are now because of being hunted by men. But the smaller lions normally survive, whereas in the past they had really big lions. That's uh, proven by scientific evidence. It's also in the pictures that I will put up. So please take a peek. And on the other side, uh, there is. Uh, so he he fought with his three dogs, but the contest was six dogs against his lion, and six dogs of 18 kilogram. Six times 80 kilogram on average would be 180 kilogram, and that's like one third, almost one third of uh, the weight of the 200 kilogram kilogram uh, lion. So the lion will, would be, if those six dogs are facing him uh, at one time, still almost three times as heavy as his, those six dogs combined. But he wasn't facing them all six together, they, he was facing them in sets of uh, three at a time. So it would be almost six times as heavy as the opponents at a certain time point. So you can imagine that uh, the dogs had been very heavy, but the third dog that already came out of a match was still uh, healing from its last match against a bigger dog that he was able to kill already had a swollen head and damage to its head before it faced the lion and those three dogs stayed with uh, the lion for 11 minutes and the third dog died afterwards from its injury so 11 minutes they were able to withstand the dog uh, in dog terms, uh, an opponent that was three times as heavy of the complete set of dogs and six times as heavy as they were in their bouts. And after that, they released uh, the second, uh, second three dogs, uh, because four, five, and six. And then this big lion, Nero, got hurt and didn't want to fight anymore. So, those that were uh, from the lion camp said he won because he was just too majestic to fight his mere uh, mortal dogs still weighing six times as much as the bout he was facing and three times as much as the complete set of dogs but those at the dog camp said no he didn't want to fight anymore and the dogs would have killed him if they were uh, if the match wasn't stopped in favor of the lion. So this was quite in inconclusive to say the least, but still it was given 
to the lion and then they said okay we will bring another lion and now they brought Wallace. And Wallace was a smaller lion but enormously ferocious. So in contrary to this uh, narrow dog, he uh, attacked the dogs very hard all the time and he, he also killed the dogs. But he was now facing those uh, six dogs. But Turk was not, uh, not, uh, not there anymore, and that was the dog that was able to, to stick with uh, the gigantic lion for 11 minutes uh, before it was uh, picked up. But 60 kilograms, not a small feat, but he died as I mentioned. But on the other hand, of the six uh, dogs that were facing, were facing the this Wallace dog, there were also dogs from the first bout that were already enormously maimed by this Nero lion and now facing Wallace. They took him a uh, mere minute, I mere minutes a dog to uh, defeat them. So in summary, are dogs able to defeat uh, a lion? In the case of Nero they were case of Wallace they weren't, although I must say that the dogs that were facing um, Nero some already had injuries. Huh? I don't think it would uh, make that much of a difference, but four, five and six of the first bout were able to close, close the deal, whereas in the case of uh, Wallace, who also was released to face uh, three dogs at a time, or perhaps two dogs at a time, if you look at the uh, different references, they said that they, in the case of Wallace, they decided that they have to, uh, the line has to face two dogs at a time, but for them for three bouts, and that could make it a lot easier, of course, because then it would be not uh, six times the weight difference per bout, but nine times, and I think that just makes it uh, a big difference. That being said, also the Wallace line was uh, smaller than the Nero line, so it could make it a little bit more fair again. But still, if the lions were facing uh, the same weight of dogs of this bull and terrier breed, I'm almost 100% sure that it would be different, that the dogs would have won and just teared it apart. Of course, some might, might have died. I think they would. But uh, it's not to be said that uh, a gladiator type of dog cannot win over the same weight of uh, the king of an all animals and the king of the jungle, also known as the lion, which is a formidable warrior itself. But the same weight was not tested in this bout. There are stories known that six massives we're facing one lion, also a big lion. So for the, for the same reference, it would be again a lion of 300 kilograms. Six massives would be the same size of dog eh, in kilograms, if they were weighing about 50 kilograms a piece. But on the other hand, uh, a massive is a completely different animal than a bull terrier. So the six massives didn't want that much of a piece of that lion, I just were not able to put the resistance that they wanted. Whereas so those bull terriers just went in. And now you might be thinking that your dog is much tougher than a, a cat. But if you look at pets, cat pets are often very much stronger than pet dogs, especially in the same uh, weight range. If you, however, are comparing a working terrier dog for example, a Petadil Terrier, a Fell Terrier, a Border Terrier of working lines, or a game dog type of dog, I would bet on that uh, animal over cat, even the same weight range. But uh, dogs, pet dogs versus pet cats, I think 99% are the same weight, the cat will win. There are some differences between dogs and cats, and one is that uh, 
jets are extremely explosive, very athletic, also better uh, hunters, even the fat cats are often a lot of better uh, hunter. But the dogs have a big heart and can go the long uh, haul. But those pet dogs don't have the temperament and also are not selected to perform anymore, whereas cats still are quite able to fend for themselves, have to catch rodents, catch birds and kill and eat them, even without the uh, support of humans, whereas dogs have it a lot harder. What I also found, for example, street dogs, that street dogs are known also to kill cats, but take into consideration that the average street dog is a lot heavier than the average street cat. Okay, I hope you like this video. Have a great day. Bye bye.